Our other top story this evening, one state lawmaker is calling for changes to a law that our I-team first exposed. Our Kylie McGivern has been digging into Florida's pay-to-stay law, which can allow the state to find prison inmates thousands of dollars long after they've actually been released. Yeah, it's a law that one state senator tonight says is being unfairly applied, creating a debt essentially that makes it more difficult for those inmates to get their lives back on track when they do get out. And tonight, Kylie is following through on her original reporting, which began with a tip from a former inmate who has since turned her life around. And the selective enforcement is really troubling. Democratic State Senator Jason Pizzo out of Miami. When I was a prosecutor, uh, I, I never saw it come up as an issue. Responding to our reporting on Florida's incarceration costs, a $50 a day fine, state law says, is based on the length of someone's sentence, not how much time someone actually serves. In April, we introduced you to Shelby Hoffman, who spent 10 months in prison on drug-related charges. She was released early after completing a youth offender boot camp. Her original sentence, seven years, a sentence she still owes on, $127,750. You charged me for a cell that I didn't occupy. I felt so tricked and so fooled. There is no ladder with them that will ever truly allow you to be a second chance anything. There isn't, and they make sure of it. Hoffman has a family now, a home, works in healthcare, and earned her bachelor's degree this month. You know, as somebody who is in recovery, uh, doing case management is my way of being a part of the solution. But to land her dream job doing case management with her criminal history, Hoffman needs an exemption from disqualification from the state, an exemption she was denied solely because of the money she owes. I am truly being stopped by one single barrier, and it is a dollar sign. Your reporting was excellent because it identified and really uh, you know, the, really the specifics of when it's selectively enforced. In a recent court filing, we found the Department of Corrections acknowledged that it has more than 80,000 convicted prisoners, but has filed approximately only 142 motions for imposition of civil restitution lien judgments since 2002. And over a three-year time period, the state collected just $80,000. What do you think needs to change about this incarceration cost of $50 a day? At the very least, you, you are billed for or you pay or you are responsible for those days, those nights actually spent in a, in a state facility. I don't think any of your viewers who stay only eight days at a hotel but get billed for 10 uh, would, would, would like that either. For someone to actually be out free and clear, not on probation, and they're still getting billed for another five, six, seven hundred days or nights. Uh, that's ridiculous. Do you plan to look at that further this coming session or what are your plans having seen that this is happening? Absolutely. If you're doing the right thing. If you're, you know, following the law and you're trying to make a, a good life for yourself and, uh, you know, we should be there to assist. We should be there to help, not, not to create these, these unnecessary roadblocks. We will keep you updated with the details on any bill filed concerning incarceration costs next legislative session. With photojournalist Randy Wright, I'm I-Team investigator Kylie McGivern taking action for you. And as we mentioned, this story originally came to us through a tip. If you have something you would like the I-Team to investigate, we want to hear from you. Just scan this QR code to share your story.